Hello everybody, welcome to another video! In today's video we're going to be talking about graphics cards. Wait, no, I swear it's kind of interesting. In today's video we are going to talk about the different flavors of graphics cards. So say you're looking at like a GTX 960. Maybe there's a Palette GTX 960 that costs like $40 less than the ASUS G GTX 960. But what's the big idea? What's the difference? What, what makes it worth $40 more? The manufacturers usually release their own version of video cards. Uh, perhaps the ASUS version is clocked 50 megahertz faster than the Palette version and that's why it's $40. But at the end of the day, is that really worth it? I mean, sure. Synthetically, when you look at the on-paper benchmarks, of course the ASUS is going to be better than the Palette. But, in real world, does it really make that big of a difference? So to hopefully answer this question, we're going to be comparing two AMD Radeon HD 4850s. Unfortunately, I can't go out and buy brand new graphics cards to compare them because I don't have the budget for that. Maybe one day. So here we have an ASUS EAH 4850, which is 625 MHz core clock, and it was about 190 bucks when it was new. And then here we have an HIS Ice Q4 Turbo, which is a 650 MHz core clock, and it was about $230 when it was new. So we're going to compare these two graphics cards side by side and see if that little boost in performance is worth the price adjustment because the HIS 4850 was one of the most expensive 4850s in its time. Now I'll let you know right now we're purely comparing clock speeds. If you're looking at a specific model of video card and one manufacturer offers it with GDDR6 and the other offers it with GDDR5, then that price adjustment is very much justified because in terms of the actual technology, if it's newer technology on one card compared to another even though they're the same model, then you are definitely going to see a performance boost, but we're talking more so manufacturer overclocks. So our test rig is a system that I'm borrowing from a friend. It is a i7-3770K with 8 gigabytes of uh, DDR3 RAM operating at 1066 megahertz. And we have, of course, the ASUS EAH4850 to start things off. So because I don't have access to a 1080p monitor, and because these graphics cards, while they can do 1080p, they were more designed for 900p at most. Uh, we're running these at 720p, so 1280 by 1024, close enough to 720p. Um, and Cry of Fear ran quite well. It was a solid 60fps. Our GPU usage was between 35 to 55, sometimes 60%, so we're going to make a note of that. Portal 1 was quite playable, uh, solid 60 FPS. I did do this weird thing that made it tank down to 30, but you wouldn't really normally do that unless you're screwing around. The GPU usage was um, between 30 and high 60, but overall the, the frame rate stayed consistent when you were just playing the game like a normal person, so yeah. Next up is Need for Speed Most Wanted. Every setting is maxed out on this and it runs beautifully. Our GPU usage is between mid 50s to high 60s, so we'll make a mental note of that, but otherwise, between the occasional micro stutter, this was very, very playable. And to end things off, we have Call of Duty Black Ops Zombies on Deriz. We notice that the HD 4850, while it's just absolutely handling this like a champ, it's struggling because our CPU usage is in the high 70s, low 90s, so we'll make a mental note of that. And if you take our VRAM usage, it's actually like basically using up all the VRAM we have, but either way, very, very playable. Once again, smooth 60 FPS experience, but uh, interesting to see this card does struggle just a little bit. Alright, so the EAH4850 has proven to be a, quite a decent card for some older titles, and spoiler alert, I have used this card to game at uh, 1080p, and it works alright. Obviously you're not going to be running AAA titles from 2019, but older titles from the late 2000s, early 2010s, they run just fine at 1080p for the most part, so this is quite a capable card. So my theory is the HIS should run the games a bit better or it should be using this, the GPU less. Maybe not a whole lot less, but even just a little bit less. If we notice it's just a little bit less, I'll count that as a win, I guess. So, 
Let's take this thing out, and yes, it's hot as hell. Oh my goodness, that's a hot card. They are not kidding with that little warning label. So we're going to take this graphics card out, put the HIS in, and I did notice right away that our idle temps for the HIS were way lower, at least 15 to 20 degrees lower than the EAH. And also when it idles, it drops the core from 500 megahertz, which the EAH idles at, to 150 megahertz, which is pretty good for power savings. So back to Cry of Fear, and to no one's surprise, the GPU usage is literally the same as last time. Game is just as playable, all the same sorts of stuff. I was comparing the two videos that I took, and literally, in the same spots, the usage is the exact same. So, no performance increase, same usage, hmm, this doesn't look good. Comparing the two videos on Portal 1, I'm noticing that the HIS is just a tiny, tiny little bit better at handling Portal 1 in the sense that the GPU usage wasn't quite as high, which is interesting. I don't really know if this is a one-off or not, but let's see what the other games show. Now Need for Speed Most Wanted is doing the exact same thing that Portal was doing, where with the HIS we get just a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit less GPU usage, which is quite interesting. Did this affect the performance, the feel of the game, the frames per second? No, not at all. But it's really, really interesting to note. But things return back to normal when we fire up Call of Duty Black Ops 1 Zombies on Deriz. The GPU usage is the exact same as last time. Uh, once again, the card can totally handle it, even though you can see that it, it's, it's working. It's breaking a sweat. But it's the same GPU usage this time, so... We have, don't see that weird effect this time around. So I think most people already knew the answer to this. It really doesn't make that big of a difference which flavor of graphics card you choose, unless, as I mentioned, it's different technology, i.e. different RAM or maybe RAM capacity. That too is a, a big factor, but we took two 512 meg GDDR3 4850s, pitted them side by side, and we did see the whole synthetic benchmark improvement uh, in two games, but like that was just literally numbers. We didn't actually notice that performance difference. The game ran just as fine both times. So honestly, in my opinion, when you're searching for a graphics card and you have the more expensive option or a least expensive option, as long as there's no crippling limitation for the least expensive option, i.e. it's not 128-bit over 256-bit memory bus, something like that, just save yourself the money and go for the cheaper model. There's literally no point to having the more expensive one for a slight overclock. It just doesn't make any sense. So I hope you guys enjoy the video and stay tuned for more.